now let's go with the Passat. First of all, it has the most classic layout of all of the three cars we compare. However, in comparison to the older generation, the new BH generation here, it looks of course more stunning, at least to me. We have four horizontal fins now and they directly lead over to the headlights. It's a beautiful design scheme in my opinion. And then crossing those lines are, is the lower line of the headlights and you see also the daytime running light here as well. So a very sharp outline in the front definitely. If we then continue over, 18 inch alloys here. Again, beautiful with those gray scheme, I think. Well, it's not really black, but it's not really high uh, bright chrome, something in between and I think a very good choice because you also don't see the dust on that uh, too much. Then if you continue to the outline here, the chrome span around the windows, also a little bit rounded up, coupe style like, but you see the windows are actually quite high and there's also a um, uh, difference to the Master 6 especially. Here you see that the space we have inside is better used then. The dropping line is by the way running on the height of the door handles. I think that's a very beautiful design solution because, well, on the one hand you cannot continue the design line through the whole car just separately, but then the door handles are also not that prominent. And if we go to the rear, this is the most classic sedan style where we have the flat area here in the rear part. In the rear, those new taillights are stressed more a little bit horizontal, therefore the car sits a little bit broader. But in general, if you compare the other two cars, this one looks most bulky in the rear. So from the rear, definitely the Superb is my favorite. And this one is, has the yeah, well, very classical layout. But you know, for a sedan, you also keep a lot of space on the inside then. You can see it right there. Um, by the way, the rear view camera is also uh, just hidden below there. It's, um, you know, here it opens the trunk, um, but when the rear view camera is activated, it's also hidden here. It flips up and then you have the rear view camera there. Get inside. They have solid door handles, and also when you close the door, it's this favorite Passat closing sound. Really solid. And I've put the window down on purpose because you see, I can put my fingernail in between here. It's very interesting. And see, it's kind of like a double layer, and therefore the car is also that well isolated. Then, if I take a seat, these ones are the optional. Ergo comfort seat. I can really recommend them, especially for tall people. It really feels like they suit the, the human body form, you know. It's really that they have tested that quite a long time and also got some certificate for that. And um, I can just stress it really good feeling. And um, also the surface is really nice because we got some one textile um, cloth here on the outside which is kind of soft and then a special one that is a little bit more sticky on the inside that you don't slide around that much and you can also lengthen the seating area that is very nice then as well especially for for tall people and we got some special controls here below then as well and those are the controls i think it's a very strange mix because we have here this one is electronically for the for the back part of the seat also electronic the lumbar support but then to put the seat higher and lower you have to use the manual one and also to put it higher in the front manually and also lengthening it the part here is also manual and putting front and the back is again manually I'm not sure why didn't they do everything electrically yeah? I mean it's a quite Expensive sleeve and ergo comfort says here, here that is a massage function, but it predominantly works at the lower lumbars part. And again, another upward perspective, you see the different cloth materials, also visually very attractive.
And let us see the cockpit perspective, see the general overview. I'm really in favor of this interior because the main elements are here, those vents, which form a very horizontal line. And you see the inside of the vents go align with a non with, with a fixed part here, with an analog clock here as well. And everything looks very clean, very horizontal. We got the metal aluminum style here, different styles for that one here available, of course. But I think, well, the classiest interior of all the three, I think. But of course, it comes close to the one of the Skoda. Everything from great build quality. Then if we turn on the ignition, you see different things happening. Um, for example, First of all, Volkswagen Logan in the center. This is the biggest GPS that is available. And I also got the digital instruments. We're going to um, take a detailed look at that one very soon. Other thing, 7-speed uh, DSG. Again, also good build quality. If you feel everything, slide everything to the front and back again, that everything refits. Also temperature stuff here and so on. But again, it's not better than the Skoda build quality, uh, so it really keeps up the, at the same level. Driver's point of view is like this. Nice steering wheel, good handling, and also not too tall. If you look over to that side, this is the POV from the driver. Still again, very nice. I'm looking at the lower console, it's also with a nice design with those edges there at the lower part. Instruments, those are the digital ones like the Audi Virtual Cockpit, just that it's called Active Info Display here. You have to pick it optionally, um, so you can also go for the standard analog one. And um, interesting is what you can show in the middle part, assistance systems, driving data, for example, um, tire pressure, phone information, your entertainment system, and so on, and then Option, or you can also put the GPS there or GPS info in the left side, for example, the height where we actually are at the moment. Classic would be that you see the arrows there and um, consumption. Then in the middle, you see how much we've consumed, and right is uh, the range. So, a lot of possibilities. I think um, you know it's a very clear display and it looks very beautiful. So, my favorite digital display, although. I have nothing against analog displays, the classic ones. And the GPS we have here is also one of my favorite ones, definitely. You can use it like an iPad, zoom in and out. The reaction times are also very nice. You can scroll inside the map and then you have those buttons here at the lower part with the proximity sensor where you put in, for example, new destination. However, you can still have the hotkeys for GPS um, or the uh, general menu here. There's also this App Connect available um, if you have the Apple CarPlay, Mirror Link, or Android Auto uh, phones available that you can connect them. And um, can also browse with those knob here that is also possible. So use this one or use it right here. But you know, you also, you always have to, you can, you can also change to the, to the English language tree as well. Everything is working very intu uh, intuitively and very fast, definitely media or voice. Next source. Selection. This function is currently not available. Sorry again. Next command. Next source. Source aux. So that is working, but you know the aux source is not um, plugged in at the moment. So voice active uh, voice stuff here also working. And the climate control, good quality, nice to turn, also see temperature below here. Here, there's a button for um, heated steering wheel and heated seats at the same time. It is also appearing in the display then. And in the display then, then you can also just activate one of those. For example, just the heated steering wheel or just the heated seats. And driving modes are right here. You can either pick the button here. Later on, I'll tell you more what that does. Or then switch also just to using the touch screen sport, individual, comfort, and so on, adaptive suspension. This is a rear view camera with a very good solution. You can either have this uh, split view here, where we have the rear view in the right part, and uh, left part is in the um, different sensors with, a, with this drone fake view from above, and there's also a live, there's also a live view there possible. You can also put it on the whole screen, the rear view camera, see the tripod here behind, 
and um, you have different setups where you can show some stuff. Um, for example, here, very close look from behind. Um, then you can also change the contrast and all the stuff. So a lot of possibilities. Um, what you want, or this one here is the big drone view from above. Then, um, so definitely the best one that is available here from all the three cars. This camera system here. Also, as you see, there's a front camera. Storage space at the inside of the doors, standard one, but quite a lot of space. Then the glove box coming on quite fast, but you know we also got heavy stuff in there. Also, cooling function is available. Then in the middle console, shown you that before. Just some small space, predominantly for smoking, but you know, you shouldn't do that in this car. Then in the middle part, again something for smoking, but you just put it out. Good beverages holders here as well. Then the middle armrest, you can put that one up. Again, very solid quality, everything is totally fixed. And inside we got a USB slot. And one more for the glasses up here, quite huge. And one more small storage space next to the steering wheel. Very nice. What is always nice, by the way, in the right part you see how to open the hood. And the left part here, a separate button to open the trunk from the driver's perspective. And I think those two levers here, they are perfectly attached, kind of. Because you're always searching a car, where is what? And I think this is just the right position here at the left side near to the door. Oh, and by the way, I love it when you turn off the car. See here, there's a small facade coming, driving, oh, hello. <laughs> very nice, looks very great. Let's get in the rear and wow, with a wide angle here, doesn't the car look great also from the rear part and also when, the, when it's opened, you know, all the shapes and stuff. Let's see what we can expect. An attachment for the rear seat entertainment here, by the way. And you know, it's the shortest car we have here, minus 10 centimeters in length comparing to the Master 6 and the Skoda Superb and still we got a lot of knee space so we are really using the space we have here. The Superb has even a little bit more knee space but however considering the length very very good result here. As for the headroom I mean we're still in the sedan we don't have a panoramic roof here but here is easily space for 190 meter in height for tall people so a um, better result than in the Master 6 here definitely and um, almost same result in the Skoda Superb they're even a little bit better but I'm really well kind of surprised and um, one of the best um, and it comes for the rear headroom when you're driving a sedan if you want the panoramic roof and then travel with tall people here in the in the rear and you should probably go for the estate version then it's also not a problem but in general also very good seating vision you're not falling too far uh, back there and um, such a good comfortable car for four people even here with the sedan version. And this is when you put the middle armrest down, beverages hover for the rear passengers and also the ski hatch is available to open right here. Do it like that. An option you can also get the three zone climate function that you can have a separate control here in the rear and below that one here as we know that from the Superb already uh, standard German power plug. I'm not sure. I think when the American version it might be a little bit different but you have the real power here in the rear. Good for your car office. In the loading compartment you're flipping the VW logo. It's electronically here in this everything very solid here by the way. Well processed some smaller segments here. You can also remove them if you want. 12 volt power supply goes also wide in there, definitely quite well to use, but again, not that well loadable than with the Superb because we have the classic setup here. But I've heard that, um, yeah, yeah, especially, um, you know, guys in South, South America, they really appreciate the separate trunk because of burglary reasons. So that's also one aspect to, um, by the way, here for you know, some bags to, to hang in, also a nice solution. And then to flip the seats, you have to pull this one here and the difference and with the master here it automatically flips down that's really a good thing you can do that right here then you have quite even loading space so <clears throat> nice solution get some lip around here and um, if i put it up again there is also a ski hatch available that would be right here then
Welcome to this ride then with the Volkswagen Passat. 1.8 liter TSI, so a little bit less displacement than with the Skoda, but you know, very similar engine still. 180 horsepower, again less than the Skoda. I told you we picked that one on purpose that we also have an engine that has a little bit less power. And this engine has and the same acceleration than with the Mazda, with a naturally aspirated engine with 2.5 liter of displacement, more displacement, a little bit more horsepower. But as we got the turbo here as well, both engines are almost at the same power. Also going more in detail on that when I drive the Mazda later. And um, but just to give you some figures now, 7.9 seconds and 7.8 seconds. Well, so basically the same from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour both of those engines, Passat and Master, we have right here. I also picked this engine here, in combination with the DSG. This is done here, a seven-speed DSG. One gear more than with the Skoda, by the way. I picked that, that one here because I think it's the best suitable engine overall for this car, considering the size and the weight on the, uh, of the car and also the consumption because you know they are very strong engines for a car, they have weak engines for a car, you have such a wide variety. But then which one is really, you know, the best on average when you consider all of the factors? And I think it's that one here. Um, we'll see, we have also have started a consumption test. It will, well, we've just started here with city driving, so it says 12 liters now, but I'm quite sure that when we go on the motorway, it will go down. The usual consumption figure will also be about 10 liters for, for this engine. It's almost the same for those around 2 liter displacement engines from the Volkswagen Corporation as for the petrol engines. What is remarkable, if you compare it, for example, also to the Skoda Superb, the Passat riding here, first of all, it is the smallest car in our comparison. That means 10 centimeters less in length than the Superb and the Master 6 and you do feel that. This car here feels as the most versatile one. So yeah, fast reactions are actually no problem. Let's do another lane change here, then you can also see it. The car really feels very agile. Steering is also quite direct and feels kind of natural. We also have the different riding modes here because we have the optional dynamic suspension. And then we can even pop that one up. For example, that was the normal driving mode. Now I can also go to the sport driving mode and with a better preload kind of and gears are turned up higher. The steering also reacts a little bit director. I, yeah, I, I really like that. And when you put this one here on the sport mode, you can come close to the other engine than in the superb when it's being ridden in normal mode. It's a very, very interesting as well. So do I miss the power that the Superb pairs here? Yeah, well, you do feel the difference. And I mean, it's about one second from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour that the Superb is faster. So when you got these situations, for example, you see, oh, traffic light is turning to yellow. And you know, oh, I still want to catch that one. Or maybe fast overtaking on the motorway. Then you do feel a difference with the Superb, definitely. But, however, as the Passat has the turbo here, you will get along with this kind of power we have here with that engine very well, and it's really totally fine. And as soon as, we, as we've reached the motorway, I can also show you some acceleration tests here with the Passat, and that you can see that you get enough boost as soon as the turbo sets in. Kind of. Then about the sound insulation, I mean, I feel like Tesla rained a little bit now, so that makes it usually a little bit louder always. But still, although we had this rain, it's perfectly silent in here. And I don't feel like, you know, I have to talk loud. Superb and Passat are kind of the same from the insulation. If you ask me if one of them is better, a little bit maybe for the Passat. Because that is also one thing, you know, what do they actually do different from, you know, Audi, Volkswagen, Skoda, Seat, well, basically they share all a lot of parts, but for example, Audi often uses you know, 
certain screws that are a little bit more premium and for, as for the sound insulation it's quite often that for example the Volkswagen models are a little bit better isolated than the Seat or the Skoda ones but just very slight differences and both on the very high level but maybe the Passat here even a little bit better. I think the main difference is really that the Passat feels sportier in handling as it's a little bit shorter and it's also from the basic setup I think a little bit stiffer than the Superb. The Superb more conveys this feeling this is already high class luxury and you want to relax, have a lot of comfort, a lot of room. In the Passat you also have the feeling you have a lot of room but not as much as in the Superb. In, when you drive the Superb you feel like you have a little bit more space as a, as a driver. The seats here are also very good as I've told you earlier and while riding they also offer a good long-term comfort. If I have to pick between the Superb and the Passat seats, hmm, it's a good question. Uh, I don't know. They're both very good, definitely. I think the seat form in the Superb is even better, but the seat surface here in the Passat, that is a very good combination as I've shown you. That's maybe the main difference. See the agility when I'm doing some left, right, very good reactions. And the sport mode here is very pleasing, especially in combination with this engine, because with the Superb engine we had there, of course you can get that one for the Passat as well, but we picked different ones so we can show you different engines for both cars. When you pick the 2 liter with 220 horsepower, then go to the sport mode, mm, that could be a little bit too much for, for everyday riding. But here, when you put this one here in the sport mode, it's a very good setup, perfectly fine. It's not like if you always turning up the gears too much or so, that's, that's really very good. And you see, as soon as we went out of the city, the consumption went down now to 8.7 liters. Of course, when I push down the throttle, that will go a little bit up again, but it stresses my point that you will end up about 10 liters. If you have a little bit less power here with the Passat engine we picked, you will consume also less fuel than with the Skoda Superb engine. Not necessarily because the engine itself consumes so, so much less. It's more about when you have a stronger engine, you quite often also feel like, okay, come on, I'll go for that one, I'll push uh, the throttle even more. That just happens. Automatic cruise control, very good here in the Passat. Got the display in the, in the front here, and the distance is perfectly kept, and also the car reduces the speed to zero kilometers if necessary. Some autobahn acceleration we can test right now. For example, let's go from like about 60 to 110. Let's go now. That's it. So the acceleration figure from the Mazda and the Passat here, these two engines, they are kind of equal as I've told you, but as we got the turbo in here, the Passat here feels a little bit, you know, as we do it easier. Not that exaggerated from the sound. Also the engine sound is very well isolated, so I mean, if you want a sporty engine sound, you probably should go for a sport car, but here it's really like even totally silent when I push the throttle. So, really, I would say the car of silence definitely in the midsize segment. And if you think about, oh, are you driving a premium car? Yes, that's definitely the case with the Passat. So, I mean, some years ago, if you would told someone, oh, I'm picking a premium midsize car, I'm deciding between Audi, BMW, and Mercedes, um, or maybe a Volvo say, oh, did you consider a Passat? Hey, that's not premium, but that has definitely changed now with the new Passat V8, with the new generation that came out in 2014. That one really accounts for the premium segment now, and all of the riding, the suspension is really so good. It's the same actually with the Superb, just with a little bit um, more sportier focus. I feel that, all, especially now when I'm driving a little bit faster here on the Autobahn, comes close to an air suspension. That good is the suspension and um, yeah, you can just applaud them for, for doing that. And although we have a mid-size car here, the car feels that agile that you think, okay, that might also be a compact car as for the sportiness. And that's, I think, a 
very good thing. Driving about 110 still on the, on the autobahn and it's, it's so silent in here. So a long-term travel car. That's also why the Passat is the most famous business car in Germany by far. So everyone who's, you know, especially if you're uh, on a fixed employed term, you get a, either get a car from your company and it's usually a Passat and um, all of the all of the big fleets from the very large corporations in Germany they also always have the Passat as a, as a main car definitely. That might also be some reason why some Passat can actually sometimes be cheaper than in those fleet offerings than other cars that are usually you know less expensive but the, then the, the system can, can really change. Looking at the GPS I can do that in the central screen and that's it's a very good overview, definitely. And as I told you earlier, I can also change the instruments while driving, what I want to see. For now, I had all the classic view. Um, and I'm, by the way, now at 9 liters, that's a realistic value. I know I have that, like the, the arrows from the from the speedometer, I'm at full sight. And um, I can still ch change that for to whatever I want to have inside there. You know, I wouldn't do it so often while driving. I'll get off the motorway, fast car, and see the agility again. It's still a kind of a wet road. Hammer the brakes now. Yeah, good, good braking, definitely. Another traffic light, and then we we'll also do some faster acceleration around the corner. That will also be interesting. By the way, the driving modes can, here again, I can also go to this eco mode. Got the rolling that I can save fuel. I think um, you, I do prefer this mode because in everyday driving life, it doesn't feel that good when a car is using the engine brake that much, especially when they're going more on flat terrain. But let's go to the sport mode again. You can also either pick the button sometimes more or choose it on the touchscreen. And then while waiting, I can also, for example, put the GPS in the central digital instruments. It's the same like in the Audi virtual cockpit, by the way, just happened another name here. You can, uh, for example, stay also with the with the analog instruments, definitely. Well, really against the side when standing still here. Now it's green. Let's push it. A yeah, little bit of wheel spin. But it was, you know, on the wet road, kind of that of wheel spin. The other cars had a, uh, went a little bit drier road, so not too much of wheel spin here because it's not the most powerful engine. I've seen a very good acceleration from the standstill until 50. Really like that. And I can just stress again, you know, from the outside, it's the Passat. It's a very standard car, especially as for, I think in Germany, it's one of the standard cars. And the basic design, you would also, wouldn't also say, oh, it's that sporty, it's that emotional. The car is, a, is really driving sporty, especially when I got the DCC, the dynamic chassis control, and set it to, to the sport mode here. You can really have a lot of fun in driving. And I think when, you are, when I look at all the three cars now, I'll also tell you more about suspension of the Master, of course, when I drive it. This one is definitely the sportiest car of all, most agile car. So if you more prefer the driving fun, then I think you should go for that one. If you more prefer the space and comfort, then definitely go for the Skoda. And Mazda, I think, you know, when you're not that tall, then you'll be best off with the, with the Mazda. And they are also more the stress on the long, uh, long term comfort and also um, a softer suspension. That's, you know, um, some in between conclusion. Let's go in detail on that as well when we drive the Mazda and then later on we sum everything of that up. So, so far, I hope you enjoyed riding the Passat movie.